This is Nick with Logos by Nick.com, and in this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this repeatable geometric line pattern using Adobe Illustrator. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Illustrator. I'm going to open up a new document here. And the first thing we have to do is set up the workflow so that we all have similar menu options here. So I'm going to come up here to where it says view, and I'm going to make sure I have snap to point enabled. Make sure you have snap to point and nothing else in here enabled. So if you have anything else like smart guides, go ahead and turn that off. That will get in the way of what we're going to do here in this tutorial. And once we've done that, we're going to want some menus open over here. We're going to want the color menu, which you can access by going to window and clicking on color. We're going to want the align menu. You can go to window, align, and then the pathfinder, which you can access through the same way. Those are the menus we're going to want open throughout the tutorial. So to get it started here, the first thing we're going to create is a polygon. So I'm going to hold a click over the square tool over here, the rectangle tool, and I'm going to look for a polygon tool. And I'm going to click and drag on the canvas and I'm going to hold shift like this so that we make a nice polygon like that. And now I want to rotate this around. So I'm going to bring my cursor to the outside edge over here until the cursor icon turns into a rotate handle. And once you get that, you can just click and drag to rotate. And I'm going to hold shift to lock the proportions like that. And there we go. That's what we want. We want to end up with our polygon looking like this with the sides flat vertically and the points, I mean, uh, the points going vertically and the, the horizontal sides flat here. So once we've done that, let's give this a different fill color so we can see it better. I'm going to make this red. I'm going to bring the opacity of that down roughly in half. And I'm going to select the stroke fill and I'm going to remove that by clicking this little red slash right here. Now I'll go back to the, the uh, regular fill color. And now what I'm going to do is let me just move this towards the center of the page. I'm going to scale this down a little bit, holding shift while I scale the lock of proportions like that. What I want to do is with this selected, I'm going to hold, I'm going to click and drag and then hold alt and then move this out here like that. And now I want to snap these corners together. So let me zoom in over this area right here by holding alt and rolling up the mouse wheel a few times. I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold control. If you want to move your page around, you can just press down the mouse wheel and move the mouse. I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and I'm going to grab that point right there and I'm going to snap this onto this point right here. Just like that. So we end up with something like that. And if you click off that and zoom in, you should be able to see that it's lined up nicely like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag over both of these. And I want to come over here to the uh, shape builder tool. Click on that. And then just click on this little center diamond right here so that this becomes three separate shapes like that. And now what we can do is we can go back to the select tool. Click off of this to deselect everything. Take this bottom piece and just get rid of that by pressing delete on the keyboard. And then we want to take this top piece over here and just rotate this around holding shift like that so that we end up with this right here. And I'm going to click and drag over both of those objects. Come back over here to the shape builder tool and hold alt and then just click and drag through these two pieces right here like that to delete them. What we want right here is this shape right there. So let's go back to the select tool. Let's remove the fill color and let's give this a stroke fill. I'm going to make this, uh, I'm going to make the stroke black. I'm going to increase the size of it like this. And once we've done that, let me take this, let me rotate this around. I'm going to bring the cursor to the outside corner like this, rotate it around, hold shift so that it is now going vertically like that. What we basically did was we flipped it vertically. It was like this. Now it's like that. Okay. Now it's like an upward pointing arrow. So I'm going to make a few copies of this now. Let me zoom in on this. I'm going to click and drag this and then hold alt to make a copy and then hold shift so it locks it onto the vertical axis like that. And I'm going to put that copy right there and I'm going to make one more copy of this. I'm going to click and drag it and then hold alt and then hold shift like that so that we have these copies right here. And I'm going to click and drag over all of those copies and I want to make sure that they're spaced out evenly vertically. So I'm going to come over here to the align menu and where it says distribute objects, I'm looking for this option right here that says uh, vertical distribute center. There we go. And now with all of these still selected, I'm going to come back over here to the Shape Builder tool and I'm going to hold Alt and then just click and drag through this bottom area over here to get rid of that so that we're left with this right here. Now we can go back to the Selection tool. With this still selected, come over here to Object, Path and click on uh, Outline Stroke. And then we want to unify them together by coming over here to the Pathfinder and clicking on this button right here that says Unite. And once we've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this back around like this. I'm going to hold shift so it locks it onto those angles like that. And I'm going to put this copy over here and I'm going to click and drag this and then hold alt and shift and move this copy over here. And I'm going to do that one more time. Click and drag, hold alt and shift and move this copy over here. 
Now I'm going to take this copy right here and rotate that by going to Object, Transform, and clicking on Rotate. And I want to rotate this by 120 degrees. So I'm going to write 120 and press OK, and we end up with that right there. And this one, I will do it by 240. So I'll come over here to Object, Transform, Rotate, and I'm going to rotate this by 240 degrees. And there you go. Now what I want to do is snap these together over here. I'm going to zoom in on this. I'm going to hold control, grab this point right here, and just snap it onto this point right here, like that. And now I want to make sure that these are aligned vertically. So let me select both of them, and let me click on one of them so that we have an active selection there. You'll notice the thicker blue outline going around that one. And then I'll come back, come back over here to the Align menu, and I'm looking for this option right here that says Vertical Align Top. And that's going to align those two like that. And now what we can do is we can come back over to the uh, Shape Builder tool, Click on that, zoom in, hold Alt, get rid of that, get rid of that. Again, holding Alt and clicking to do that. And then draw a line going through both of these shapes right here so it makes it into one unified shape like that. Let's go back to the selection tool, move this over. Let me zoom out a little bit. Now I'm going to take this object right here and put this right up top like that. Now let me zoom in. I want to take this corner right here and snap it to this corner right here. So let me hold Control, grab that corner and then just snap that on there like that. There we go. And now select everything here. Go back to the Shape Builder tool once again. Zoom in over here. I'm going to get rid of these little protruding corners right here. I'm going to hold Alt and click and drag through them to get rid of them. Come over here, do the same thing. Hold Alt, click and drag through them. There we go. And we're looking pretty good here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line going through these shapes right here to unify them together like that. And then we should have one solid shape like that. So let me go back to the Select tool. Let me zoom out a little bit. I'm going to start making copies of this object and surrounding it with them. So let me click and drag and then hold Alt to make a copy of it. I'm going to hold Control, take this corner and snap it into this corner right here. Just like that. And let me zoom out. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fit one right here. Let me click on that. Hold Alt, click and drag. Hold Control, take this corner, snap it into there. There we go. I'm going to do this again, make a copy of it, take this corner, snap it into here. Looking good. And I'm just going to repeat this going around this object until we're finished. We come back around full circle here. Okay, so as you can see, we have uh, created duplicate copies going all around the original. What we want to do now is select all of these and then unify them together by coming over here to the shapes mode and clicking on unite. And it's going to make that all into one object right there. Now what we want to do, in order to make this a repeatable tile that it can be used as an actual pattern fill, what I want to do is grab just a selection out of this center part right here. So let me grab the, uh, let me hold a click over the polygon tool so we get this little flyout menu. And I'm going to choose the rectangle tool. And I'm going to put this rectangle, let me zoom in a little bit. I'm looking at the original shape here in the middle. And the bottom point of the original shape here in the middle, I'm going to start the rectangle right about there and just click and drag to create a rectangle like that. Let me make this a different color. Let me bring the opacity down in half so I can see it better. And now I want to snap this corner onto that corner so that it's lined up nicely like that. Let me grab the Select tool. Let me move this over like that. Hold Control. Grab that point and snap it onto there. And now what we want to do is we want to take this top corner right here and snap it on to this point right here. Now if we're looking at the original shape right here, we're looking at the bottom tip of the top edge of this uh, shape in the middle here. So let me, with this object selected, let me grab the Direct Selection tool. Let me click on that anchor point right there, then hold Shift and click on that anchor point right there. So we have these two anchor points selected. And zoom back in and just take them and snap them onto here like that. Now I'm going to click and drag and then hold Control so that it'll snap onto that corner like that. And that right there is what we're looking for. Now let me zoom back out. Let me grab the Selection tool and take this side and pull this all the way out like that. And we want to make sure that this rectangle is going all the way across the shape like that with, with all of this extra space sticking out. And now we just need to trim off the sides of this rectangle right here. We're going to use these, these two points, this point right here and this point right here, as a reference for where to slice off the edge of that rectangle. So let me click off of that to deselect it. I'm going to grab the Pen tool, which is over here, or you can press P on the keyboard. And I'm going to snap to this corner right here and then just hold shift and bring this line straight down like that all the way through and then click again and then finish this shape up going around the outside of everything like that. 
And do the same thing over here. Snap to this edge, or this corner rather. Hold Shift, bring this straight down like that. Click again, and bring this all the way around like that. And now what we can do is we can grab the Selection Tool, hold Shift, click on both of these shapes right here that we just created. Hold Shift, click on this rectangle right here so that we have all three of these objects selected. We have the rectangle and the two custom shapes we just drew. And then once again, back to the Shape Builder tool we go. Hold Shift, click on that, click on that, click on that, and click on that. And that rectangle right there is a selection. That is the sample we want to take from this object right here. So let's grab the Selection Tool, hold Shift, click on this object right here so that we have it all selected. And then one more time, go back to the Shape Builder tool, hold Shift, I mean, hold, I'm sorry, hold Alt, and then just click and drag a line through that like that. And you should get rid of most of that. You'll just have to come down here and get rid of this by holding Alt and clicking and dragging through that right there. And there you go. Now we can grab the Select tool. Let's zoom out. I'm going to take this red rectangle and get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. And now we have, you could take the opacity of this and bring this back up to 100%. We now have a repeatable tile that you can stack this up next to each other infinitely and you will have a line pattern that you created here with Illustrator. Let me show you an example of what I mean here. I'm going to scale this down a little bit. I'm going to come over here to where it says Object, Pattern, and I'm going to click on Make. And if you see what it did there, it took that object and it repeated it a bunch of times to make that pattern. And you now have that as a pattern to use in your swatches. So I think that should do it for this tutorial. That's how you can go about creating these uh, line patterns, this geometrical uh, line pattern using Adobe Illustrator. If you have any uh, questions, just leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.